Welcome to UNAM Chicago's Cafe Expresso, a space for bilateral conversations with people from all walks of life. Tune in to Spanish Public Radio and follow us on social media. And now your host, Alberto Fonserrata. Welcome everyone to Cafe Expresso. Happy that everybody's able to join us. Today we have a very special guest. We've got Helen Marie Corcoran, who's the president of the board of the Festival de Musica de Cámara de San Miguel de Allende. Hello, Helen Marie. Good to see you. Good to see you. Happy to be with you. Well, uh, I was going through the, the, the website, which is pretty amazing. And the history of the, of the festival is it's just beautiful. I mean, there's so many stories. There's so many characters. I, I was reading about this, Mr. Tom Sawyer, who met a, another Canadian, and then they started to get, uh, meeting more people. There was some uh, British connection, and some Chicago connection, and then uh, it became a festival. And uh, what I would like to learn uh, about you, about your personal story, how you got involved in it, and if you could please uh, share, share with the, our audience. So, well, I'll tell you how I got to San Miguel. I mean, it was really just six years ago. This is a long festival of history, 43 years, but my involvement's only been six years. And uh, I was uh, living in Washington, D.C., and all of a sudden, from two or three different places in my life, people who were completely unconnected, I heard the name of this town, San Miguel de Allende. So I thought, well, perhaps this is, this is someone, the universe speaking to me, you know, perhaps I better check out San Miguel de Allende. So I did go down for a writer's conference in February, and uh, which is a very famous event that's held every year in San Miguel. And then I came back for two months in August. And when I was there in August, there's a beautiful theater on La Peralta and I went to the box office and bought tickets. I was only able to get tickets for the very highest balconies <laughs> and went in and here were some of the most famous musicians in the world playing in this small town in the middle of Mexico. These people you would see in Lincoln Center or in Wigmore Hall in London or the Berlin Philharmonic, you know, we're playing right there in San Miguel de Allende. So I thought, well, uh, I didn't go home after two months. I stayed, mm -hmm. and now I'm the president of the festival. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so you've been uh, president of the festival for six years, I understand, right? I've, I've been president of the festival for about four years, but I, I, uh, I really did not think I would get involved. I, I came there because I'd had a very busy life up until that point, and I thought, oh, I'm going to this Mexican town and enjoy the color and the music and the flowers and do a little painting or a little writing, but... Uh, once I became aware of this festival and I realized what a treasure it was, I knew that there were a few, few skills that I developed over the years that I might be able to contribute. Now, is there any background on your, uh, like a musical background on, you, on, on your life? Uh... For me, you know, in my family, uh, music was part of our education, you know, so mm -hmm. I studied piano and okay. uh, I would have loved to have been a musician. I mean, even as a little girl, I chose St. Cecilia as my confirmation name because she's the patron of music, but yeah. I'm not a musician. I read music, I play for my own pleasure, but I've been a consistent uh, patron of the arts, uh, someone who bought season tickets and supported various organizations, you know, and been on boards of several organizations, you know, in the past, That's, that was my background. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, the, the, the work you do for, for, for this is, is, is amazing. And I was going through, uh, when I was going through the, the website, also the, you know, the, the posters, the, the publicity that they, it's just beautiful. I, how did that come about? You know, the, the, it's just works of art. Absolutely. The Versen Miguel is indeed a, a, an art center. And uh, uh, people began coming there, uh, uh, expats began coming there after World War II and using the GI Bill. There were two very famous art schools there. Uh, you know, they had a lot of the Mexican muralists worked in the town. So there, there were, you know, it's a real tradition of, our, of, uh, of art there. So basically our festival has always commissioned uh, a well-known artist to do our posters. So we have some beautiful posters, many, many famous uh, artists did, have done our posters over the years. And if you read those posters, you'll see listed on them the names of some of, some of the greats of chamber music all through those years. So we're very proud of the whole thing. That's great. 
And the festival usually takes place in the summer, right? It's, it's the summer. We do it in August. And one of the reasons for that is that the normal symphony seasons, you know, around the world start in September and go through the spring, you know, so we have the we have a shot at some really fine musicians at what would be their normal off season uh, where we're not competing with the great symphonies you know, of the world. But uh, uh, it, uh, so ours, ours is an August festival. Yeah. Okay. And next year we're the 12th through the 29th of August. Oh, great. Yeah. Hopefully everybody's vaccinated and everybody's out there and uh, we'll have great. in person things. We were, we were very disappointed in 2020. We had a wonderful season uh, scheduled. And of course we had to, uh, we had to cancel it. And uh, we did some virtual things through the years and we've really concentrated on our music education. But we've been contracting, we have a full season contracted for 2021. And all of us uh, were, were, were moving forward as if it's going to happen. And all everyone, the artists and everyone recognizing that at some point, uh, if it's not safe for people to come, then then we'll do it virtually. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's a new reality, and we have to cope with that. And, absolutely. You know, that's but of why course, we're here. <laughs> but of course, uh, you know, of course, we're all so fortunate in, with the wonderful uh, technology now in music. We can hear digitally the most wonderful music in the world, and we're we're uh, we're making uh, do with recorded concerts and this kind of thing. But I think you'll agree that there's nothing quite the ma like the magic of live performance, you know, and being in that hall, uh, no matter what your genre is, you know, and sometimes there's just a moment of, of magic that happens between the musicians and the audience where it can transform people's lives, you know. So we're, we're ready to get back to that. That's what we're interested in, you know. Oh, absolutely. You got a great point there. I mean, we here in, in, in Unam, Chicago, I have a a little auditorium which seats about 70 people and it's beautiful really we really miss it but on the other hand going through these uh, new technologies we have these programs for example ventana sonora which showcases different composers and artists on on every um, uh, second friday of the month uh, every two weeks and um and well, the, the, we we reach an audience that is enormous. I mean, we have an, an amazing. We have, we have people uh, listening to our our concerts from South Africa or, or China, right? So Absolutely. we we're expanding. But the, the, uh, like you said, you know, the feeling of having something live, well, that's that's different. Well, we were very pleased uh, in October to actually work with Unam and Pan American University to sponsor a very special event. Uh, first, we had a beautiful documentary about the Dover Quartet, which is a, a very wonderful young quartet in the States, and then a recorded content, uh, concert uh, two days later, and then a 45 minute live conversation with the, uh, with the, uh, the sponsors and, and the, the quartet you know, that went over a Facebook Live. And thousands of people all through Mexico uh, and in the States and other places you know, were able to watch this of course i'm limited to a concert hall of 430 seats you know so so it was wonderful to reach these thousands of people so i'm i don't know about you but i think we're, we're going to keep the best of both worlds we're going to continue doing the things that work virtually the other thing that has worked so well for us is we've made a collaboration with the curtis institute which is one of the finest music schools in the world out of philadelphia and uh, we now, uh, through the festival, sponsor uh, master classes each month with one of their faculty members or one of their recent graduates who are out as you know noted professional musicians. And uh, students all through Mexico are able to. We we pick uh, the universities will pick a couple of students whose work will be examined, you know, and, and that will be worked with individually. But then hundreds of other students are able to tune into this and watch the highest quality, uh, highest quality uh, uh, instruction. The other thing is that we're very pleased we're able to expose these institutions to the very fine young Mexican musicians. And right now, uh, because of a cello week we had a couple of years ago, we have a young woman, uh, Natalia Vilches, who's at the Peabody Institute in Baltimore working on her master's program as a result of being exposed to it through our festival education week. Wow, that's wonderful! You really yeah. do a lot of uh, a lot of things. Yeah, I think I think it's a very important path. I think that so let's keep all these things where we can make 
broader connections for people, as long as we keep the quality high. You know, I mean, you've got to keep the quality high, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And so let's use those things uh, uh, in a way that will benefit everyone. But then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get back to the live performance as soon as we can. Oh, yes, we miss that. Uh, but yeah, like, like you said, there's no turning back. I mean, we have to take uh, the best of both worlds. But, you know, um, part of the reason of this program that I started at Cafe Express is to learn about what's behind all these things, all these stories, all these festivals, the personal stories. I want to learn more about Helen Marie. Okay. What's the Chicago connection? Were you born in Chicago? <laughs> I was born in Oak Park, Oak, Oak Park, Park Hospital, yeah. western suburbs of Chicago. Both of my parents grew up on the west side of Chicago, western suburbs of Chicago. I lived in Westchester, which was the end of the world when I lived there. I don't know if you know the Westchester story, but it was there was a very famous uh, uh, man by the name of Sam Insel who set out this English village and all the streets were in and the elm trees and the lights and all of this kind of thing. And then he, uh, you know, he crashed in the depression. And so here was this place with six, eight, 10 houses in it and all the infrastructure. So that's where I grew up. And then I went to high school in River Forest at Trinity High School. I went to a school in South Bend, Indiana, St. Mary's College at oh, the okay. University of Notre Dame uh, and met my husband there who was also an Illinoisan. And uh, then we married and I had five children before I was 30. So that's the first part of my story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I also know that there is a, a Washington connection. Actually, you're uh, you're in Washington D.C. right now, right? I am. I'm in Washington D.C. right now. Yes, I sp I've spent most of my adulthood in Washington D.C. before moving to San Miguel. My husband was elected at a very early age as a congressman from the uh, for what was in the 14th district of uh, Illinois. Uh, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to get into politics, but I happened to look up the other day, uh, some of the maps and, uh, uh the gerrymandering, you know, that story. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's been, I think the 14th district has been many other things over the years between the time that, uh, that he represented it, but, uh, it's, it's something to see those maps the way they're drawn these days. But uh, at any rate, so we, uh, we came to Washington and uh, he served uh, uh, for eight years as a congressman and then ran that successfully for the Senate, but stayed here in a variety of roles. And then I, uh, I, uh, uh, I became a financial planner, one of the early generation financial planners and had a company that worked with corporate executives and did that for most of my adult life. Yeah. How old are your kids? You are, are the kids around, or uh, yeah? Well, I have, or? as I said, I had five children before I was thirty. So indeed, all of my children are older than I am now, Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I have two in Arizona right now. That's a relatively new uh, thing, and then uh, the others are in the in the Washington uh, area. And of course, I have I have eight grandchildren and two great grandchildren. Oh, that's great. So, I mean, that, that is one of the disadvantages of living, of living in Mexico is I, I'm not as close to family as I might be. I'm here now because of the pandemic. And, um, you know, we really wanted to be close. We just didn't know how long or how this was all going to work out. And so we just decided to be a little bit closer. Although we're quite isolated, we're all being very good about the whole thing. But uh, yeah, so I'll probably be here for a few more months until things get uh, a little bit better in Mexico. Right. Well, Washington, D.C. is a nice town. I lived a couple of times in, in, in Washington, D.C. when I was a kid with my dad, who was working for the World Bank. And then I was a diplomat. And I, I, had, I had the privilege right. of working at the, the Mexican embassy. So I love D.C. And what, you know, the scenes that I see on TV these days with 25,000 troops there, it was kind of like a scary, scary moment. It was different. It was just like, OK, what's going on? Right. Right. But, right. Uh, but have you ever seen any fire, fireworks like they had the other night? Never a display <laughs> like that one. Never. I remember well having Memorial Days and things like, uh, and, and actually watching it from the Kennedy Center, the room, right. which is a beautiful place. Beautiful but place. But never, never. I was like, okay, uh, Mr. Biden, this is gonna, this is gonna probably affect uh, the climate change, you know, <laughs> with all these things. You know, I don't know. Well, of course, living in San Miguel de Allende. 
Uh, it is not an exaggeration to say that we have fireworks 320 of the 365 people. <laughs> Fireworks and, then, and stray dogs, right? <laughs> they, the this is something that that uh, one has to get used to because, uh, oh, I guess harking back to uh, to indigenous uh, practices and whatever, they're very often fireworks set off early, early in the day to uh, honor either a birth or a death or a saint's day or whatever. So I think we, we're counting. It's probably 320 of 365 days. They're fireworks of some sort. I know we like our fireworks. I don't, but I don't know. They're there. Yeah. Yeah. So what is a regular day in the life of uh, Helen Marie when she's in, in San Miguel? Do you go to the La Plaza? Do you eat uh, esquites? Do you, uh, <laughs> is there any, any, any particular food that you like or what is it that draws you to, uh, well, I'm, now I'm going. Now I'm going to sound like the the tourist bureau or the cha or the uh, chamber of commerce of San Miguel de Allende. But uh, <laughs> this truly is a beautiful, beautiful town. You know, it's uh, it's in the middle of Mexico, Corazon de Mexico, yeah, and uh, uh, it's high desert, and so the climate is beautiful and the sun shines. And uh, I live right in Centro, so I am able to walk everywhere. And I have to tell you that my the walking daily and actually doing your daily life by walking is just a wonderful thing to do. So as a person who really all my life has been tied to the automobile and the way I've lived, you know, this is really, it's had a major change on my life and my health and, and everything, you know. So uh, I actually um, uh, live right, as I say, right, right in, uh, in Centro. And so, uh, and I, the, I'm very near the artisan market in San Miguel. This is one of the great treasures of San Miguel. It goes for about five city blocks through the middle of town. And it, uh, you know, every everything in the world that you'd want to buy, many of them handcrafted, but then flower markets and fruits and vegetables and, you know, all of that. So uh, one of my great pleasures is to wander over to the market, you know, and go to my my little tienda and, and I'll say dos aguacates and he'll say hoy a mañana señora, I'll say hoy y mañana. <laughs> so oh, he, uh, so uh, just just walking down the street and, and doing the daily thing. I, I have to say it's, it's a, um, a very culturally stimulating town as well. So there's so many things to choose from. Uh, every every day, whether it be music or lectures or film or theater or whatever it might be, you're just in, of course, this is extremely uh, enjoyable to me. There's also a wonderful um, uh, uh, botanical garden outside of town. So I hike and, you know, do all of that sort of thing, enjoy the birds. And, and uh, you know, there's, uh, I have to say, I do enjoy uh, eating out uh, uh, in the good restaurants and meeting my friends and Lots of good coffee, you know. <laughs> oh yes, you're making me a little bit uh, jealous now. I, I'm, I'm having my espresso here, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, but I... yes, uh, it's a beautiful town. As, as you know, my sister lives there. We talked about it, and uh, yes, I think she took the best decision of her life because I love going there. She's very happy there, uh, although she has to commute to uh, Querétaro but because uh, she's also a musician and she yes, at the, uh, yes at the orchestra symphonica there but uh it's totally worth it and i think also and i have many friends from canada and from from uh from the u.s who have are buying buying property actually these days well so there I, yeah. there are a number of expats living there from the united states from canada there are a lot of europeans there you know and of course we have a lot of tourists who come and I would say in the last three or four years, we have had really an explosion of Mexican tourists coming to town. Uh, San Miguel has been listed on any number of these travel magazines and Condé Nast right. and you know, all of these as one of the most, the most beautiful city in the world. And I think a lot of Mexicans say, well, why aren't we going? You know? <laughs> so I really, yeah, I've noticed a real explosion of the Mexican tourists. And of course, the other thing that's quite beautiful in San Miguel is that they have kept a lot of the old traditions. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, around Independence Day, around the feast day of St. Michael, around Easter, we have some really, really beautiful 
uh, very reverent, very beautiful processions and things that celebrate things in an old way. You know, so people whose family are in larger cities or whatever, they like to bring their families back so that they can see this older, older way of celebrating things, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're, uh, we're uh, approaching the closing time, I think, uh, but uh, what are your plans for, uh, for the future? What do you have, uh, what, what's the next year looking for uh, festival and for you in particular? So basically we already have everyone contracted for, uh, for 2021. Okay. So we're, we've got a, a full schedule And we, we have some extraordinary things that we're, we're doing. For example, we're bringing two quartets down at the same time. So we're going to be playing octets and wow. one doesn't get a chance to hear octets very often. You know, so we, we're very fortunate and uh, we, we've got uh, string quartets and piano trios and people from Mexico, people, Asian, you know, a full, uh, a full, uh, a full, um, you know, uh, schedule, you know, for, for, the, for that festival. We're really excited about these ongoing masterclasses with Curtis. We're continuing uh, to do that every month. In fact, with it, Tuesday, we're having a, a, uh, a pianist who's now in London, but he's, and, uh, he, but he's going to be working with these uh, brother and sister uh, pianists. And it's very funny because we, uh, one of them is coming from the Conservatory in Celaya, the other from a very famous uh, individual teacher. And we got their names and, uh, I said, these names look awfully, uh, awfully alike. And then we found out they were brother and sister. So oh. maybe, <laughs> maybe we've got uh, some uh, uh, two piano concerts or, or uh, one piano four hands concerts in our future from this uh, young duo. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And, and we're just working hard to reach out uh, and make connections like this connection we've made with you. We, We had, uh, we've made some wonderful connections with UNAM and the other music schools throughout the country. And we want people to recognize the festival as bringing the highest quality music and music education to San Miguel, but also to, uh, working to make San Miguel an international music destination where people really recognize it as a place to go for fine music. Well, it's beautiful, the, the, the work you're doing, and, and you said it very beautifully. I mean, it's all about, you know, building bridges, bringing people together, and you guys are doing a wonderful job. I really hope you, we can get, uh, get to talk more about how we can collaborate. I know that you, 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 you mentioned having uh, worked with uh, UNAM and uh, Panamericana, but uh, yes. I'm sure that we can, uh, we can expand on, on, on different things, and so we'll... We'll keep the channels open and uh, anything you want to add, we still have a few minutes. Anything you want to add for- uh, no, just thank, thank you very much. It's great to make this connection with you. Yes, it was great. It was my pleasure. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll be doing this again. And please uh, come visit Chicago whenever you're around. And uh, best of luck in DC, stay safe. Yes, thank And you. thank you very much. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.